The story continues with the grandma looking into the store after flipping over a sign saying the hole is closed. Meanwhile, Kang reads the book left behind by his grandfather, where we discover that the secret room he's in was actually built for a special ritual. Since his family was the only men living inside the town, his grandpa notes that the entire book leaves behind a legacy for his future successor. It's then revealed that Dawn Village, also known as No Men Village, needs a man to help balance the yin and yang energy through the secret room. It was at this very moment Kang realized he struck a gold mine, since it seems like the entire village will be striking his gold rocks soon. So Mao Kang knows the exact purpose of the mysterious hole as the town needs one heroic man to provide yin energy to everyone else. However, Houston, we have a problem, since Kang gets ultimately flustered, due to him never ever dating a girl, even though he's now 30 years old. As he freaks out with the prospect of being the chosen one, the door opposite to the secret room suddenly begins to creak, as if someone's about to burst in. With nothing else to do other than watch on, Kang actually looks through the vent to see who it is, but his heart starts to beat as fast as mine. When I realize there's no bathroom nearby, and I just ate a lot of beans. It's then revealed that the fiery pink-haired girl from yesterday is actually the first one to line up for our boy. Now this is fitting for Easter, since the room is built like a confession room, but the only difference is there's a small hole around waist size height. A timely flashback then occurs, back to a time where Kang is busy spending some quality time with his grandfather. As they've been chilling with some popsicles, Kang asks the old man the question of why he doesn't move to the city with everyone else, instead of living with hillbillies. But the old man starts to get flustered and laughs, claiming that he would never leave the town, since he loves it here so much. Back to the present, Kang finally realized what that old sly man meant, since the Hami was really the one source of bananas for an entire village. Nonetheless, the pink-haired girl seemingly looks familiar with the ritual, so she's already getting down to business, even though Kang has no idea what to do. As the room gets heated up due to the pink-haired girl getting ready to water the banana plantation of Kang, she starts to ask him when will he reveal the banana tree. With Kang still unable to open his mouth to say anything, his heartbeat says it all, as he starts questioning his life if everything's actually real. Eventually, Michelle gets on the road, as Kang's banana tree plantation accidentally erupts into its semi-form, unable to handle the ongoing event. Unfortunately for Kang, the banana plantation was still stuck inside its greenhouse as he forgot to open the doors to let the banana trees breathe, so the girl gets confused, wondering what the heck is happening. But she's here on an important mission, as such, she grabs hold of the door keeping the banana plantation inside the greenhouse, causing Kang to have even more blood rushing through his veins. But since Kang is a total noob, he's unable to handle even the slightest of contact, so he accidentally falls on the floor due to too much excitement in the air. He then starts thinking to himself that he can't believe he spent an entire 30 years trying to get money, and throughout the entire ordeal, he never got into a relationship. However, this time, it's as if the world took all this bad luck and decided to give him a break, probably feeling bad for the loser, as it's time to finally reward him for all his failures throughout life. Regardless for the golden opportunity now in front of him, he decides today is the day he will finally man up, so Kang gets back on his feet, nervously gulping as he gets prepared. He then walks back to the vent, ready for action, so he hypes himself up, telling himself that he's a proud subscriber, so he's a great sussy baka. This time, the pink-haired beast gets surprised even more than before, as she's looking like she's ready to water the soil of the banana plantation with some sprinklers. As such, she begins the attack on the secret hole, finally relieved that there is man ready to balance the yin and yang energies within the village once again. With Pinky straight up attacking with no hesitation, our boy is left to hold onto his defenses the best he can, but it's basically one of those impossible try not to make a sound videos. Unfortunately, since it's literally Kang's first time trying to defend the goal, he accidentally explodes in like a couple seconds. However, Pinky is literally a savage as she drank the entire Slurpee of Kang, without even letting a flavor drop on the floor, basically cosplaying a love vampire. Yu Kang is astonished to see Pinky at work as he can't believe she drank everything with one single gulp. The tables then continue turning as the girl does not leave the area, instead, she decides to level up the difficulty from easy to normal, as she gets ready for the next round. This time, Kang's banana plantation was somehow able to miraculously instantly recover back to its growth form, but it turns out that it's even more mature than usual. And so the rest was history, as the two take a scenic bike ride over a waterfall, and the entire time Grandma knew what was happening. Now it turns out that the Grandma is more than a real G, as the girl comes out to tell her that she completed the job, as if the grandma is some kind of mafia boss. She even asks for some details from Pinky, but Pinky just gets flustered and storms off, utterly mad that the grandma had the gall to ask. Nevertheless, as Pinky runs off, the grandma waves goodbye and reminds her to come again whenever, like a true top G. 
Eventually, Kang comes outside as well, quickly running to his grandma, asking for a detailed explanation of the entire special ritual and how it's come about. But grandma ignores all his questions, instead she asks him how it was asking him if he enjoyed it, with no care at all, even though it's her grandson. With Kang unable to answer, she just assumes that he did a good job, as she saw the face that Pinky made after leaving. She then continues on, proudly claiming that Kang is really just like his grandfather, since he was able to own the mysterious hole like a man. However, as Kang continues to search for explanations, he discovers that his grandpa was the main yin energy the entire time he's been alive. Suddenly, Kang decides to be a bronze noob, threatening to leave, but Grandma reveals to him that the yin energy needs to be released always or else terrible things will happen. And so she begins yelling at him, like a true old lady releasing her wrath, proclaiming that only Kang is the only one that can do it now. But you know what guys, Kang decides to be an extra sussy Becca, as his face goes pale due to him asking his grandma if she ever used to be like Pinky, using the secret ritual to control her yang energy. But grandma does not confirm, nor deny the accusation, instead, she keeps her mouth open and starts blushing profusely. In the end, grandma wins the awkward stare contest, so she orders him to go home and to refer to the manual whenever needed, since Kang needs to replenish his energy for tomorrow. Fast forward to later on the day where we find Kang back at home in his room, busy trying to comprehend how his father and uncle never knew about the secret ritual. And so Kang dove deep into the ritual, just like everyone else when they find this channel as we all love the Sussy Baker stories. Anyways, Kang discovers that his grandpa came to the small town after the Great War, since they offered him unlimited In-N-Out and Jollibee. It was at Dayum village where his grandparents met, and he instantly put a ring on her finger. Shortly after, Kang's grandpa started to give excruciating details about his escapades, so Kang tried his hardest to unread everything. Nevertheless, Kang starts reading about the rules regarding the special ritual, including rule number two where he can only visit the store once a day. Rule number three brings into question age gaps, so he starts feeling safe not having to deal with cougars double his age. It's also revealed that the reason why his father never knew is because he went straight to the city when graduated. Unfortunately for his uncle, although he stayed to live his life inside the village, he didn't meet the minimum requirements to man the hole, just like the height requirements for going on a roller coaster. Speaking of the uncle during supper time, the uncle starts asking Kang if he's okay, but his wife looks on with some kind of intent at Kang, as she starts biting into a chili super weirdly, while simultaneously staring Kang down. Regardless, Kang tries to shrug it off by saying it's nothing, but he accidentally lets it slip by saying it's small. Now clearly he was talking about the amount of rice in his rice bowl, and not something specific about his uncle. Anyways, his uncle tries to cheer him up by asking Kang about his first day at work, only for Kang to nervously mention how it was better than he imagined. Upon hearing Kang talk about the store, uncle's wife starts to perk up a bit more, after hearing that Kang actually enjoyed work. Unfortunately, the next day, Grandma sighs as she is forced to flip the whole open sign, as Kang decided not to show up to work that day. Instead, he stayed inside his room the entire day, unable to gain motivation to leave his room, as he ponders how he didn't sign up for this sussy work. However, as he starts thinking more about what happened the previous day, someone suddenly knocks three times on his see-through door. It turns out to be Aunt Jin Hee, wanting to discuss why he didn't show up to work today, worried that something might be up. With Kang refusing to elaborate more on why he doesn't want to go to work, Jin Hee decides to invite him on a walk. And so the two begin on a scenic walk, where Kang purposely decided to stay behind her, as he's most likely busy admiring the built cake of Jin Hee. She then starts talking to him about his past, claiming that she knows how much he failed before and how much he loves money. As such, she started revealing to Kang that his grandfather is super rich, and he's the one that owns most of the land within the village. He's even super surprised to learn that his prime house location in Seoul was actually bought by his grandfather, not his father, who claimed that he bought it a long time ago when it was cheap. And so Jin Hee, the ultimate big brain mastermind, has easily brainwashed Kang into staying by exploiting his love for money. Thus, Kang became super motivated to become protector of the mysterious hole, as he now knows he can start charging everyone that shows up. 